Hello everybody, this is Quick Square here, and today we are back playing more Hermit Pack on the Creedcraft server. And we have been building some, and if you're very attentive to the mini-map, you will see what is, uh, that something has definitely been built, and that is this right here. And this is absolutely massive, and it's not even done yet. Um, you can kind of see how, how big it's supposed to be in the end. And this is uh, supposed to be a lodge, a commons area, or like a town hall of sorts, where we can, uh, you know, meet together or post announcements or, you know, just different stuff like that. And so, um, we, uh... I, I started work on this, and C4 started helping me out and stuff too, and so it's kind of almost become a community project now. But uh, anyway, it's just kind of got this uh, pretty simple uh, front. I don't know, maybe it's not as simple as I'm making it out to be, but it is... Um, yeah, anyway, it's... This took me a long time to... Uh, build all this, and we're not even half finished. We haven't even begun to think about the interior. I'm just gonna put it like that. And so we got a long ways to go, but that is just fine because what we are doing in today's episode is back over at our main base. We are going to be transforming this into an awesome ore producing mine of awesomeness, I guess. Does wow, that was a lot of awesome all in one sentence. Um. So <laughs> essentially we're going to have um we're going to be using the actually additions uh r atomic reconstructor uh with a lens that it has and if we go over and grab that book out of our one of these chests over here aha reconstruction we want the lens of the miner and this uh essentially creates ores out of stone when it hits stone, it turns the stone into an overworld ore, and when it hits a block of netherrack, it'll turn the netherrack into another ore. And so, and then each operation uses quite a bit of power, and so we'll need to run power over here eventually. Uh, but for the moment, we want to start on the aesthetic part of this build, and that will be that we'll have a minecart running down and back up out of the mine down here. And so, I'm guessing that eventually we'll probably even have our cable um, go underground instead of above ground to here. And so I'm not even going to worry about running power uh, to the place where we're going to be doing this eventually. But, dun to dun there we go. Um, yeah, we filled in this area with dirt because this is the level of uh, stuff that this wall is holding back. Uh, or protecting from potential floods because of the dam. And so this is the level of dirt that we want this to be at. And so we, uh, before we had a massive mine shaft that went all the way down there, but the thing is we don't actually want to go all the way down there and transport stuff. We want to go just far enough so that we have room to do stuff without actually worrying about, um, without worrying about space from above, but uh, without being too far so that we don't have to transport the minecart super duper far each time. And so that is uh, probably about a perfect uh, height right there, and so that is what we are going to go with. So before we uh, conclude all of the stuff about decoration and all that other stuff, we need to figure out how on earth this thing is going to function. And so in order to do that, what I've gotten here is we have our atomic deconstructor, and we need some power for it. And so for that, I am going to use um, just a creative power source because for the moment it's um, we're just in a creative testing world, and that's you know what we're using it for. So now we want to put this lens on there. Ta-da! The, okay, so now it has the lens of the miner on there. And I believe if we take a redstone torch, we can toggle what mode this is in. Yeah, okay. Now, whenever it receives a redstone pulse, it will fire the laser. So, 
Now we want to coordinate that with the auto placer right here and the mechanical miner right there so that whenever the uh, laser fires we have stone right here and that everything else is taken back out. Get out of here sheep. We don't. Yeah. No. Don't come any closer. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, now, what we have here is we have our auto placer uh, from Actually Editions. We have an item conduit and a quantum storage unit. Now, the quantum storage unit takes all of the stone. Uh, this is just uh, supposed to be uh, exemplary of a uh, supply of stone, which we'll have to get from somewhere else. Um, possibly start uh, automatically producing stuff like stone, and you can see it just goes from there into the placer right here. Now, we always want there to be something right here, whether it's an ore or a stone, then we want there to be uh, something there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put this to deactivation mode, meaning that it will always place something right there, which is uh, by default. If there's nothing else there, it will always place something there. Now, we need to set up a timer so that every so often this laser will fire, and then, in quick succession after it, this mechanical miner will mine it. And by the way, we do have uh, this mechanical miner on redstone mode, redstone on, so that it will automate, uh, so that we actually have to send it a pulse in order for it to mine the block there. Otherwise, it would continuously mine the stone and turn it into cobblestone because we don't have a silk touch book right there. So the basic system is set up right here. So first off, this laser will fire, you can see, will fire a little bit after it receives the redstone signal. So we have it at the minimum amount of redstone signal uh, as far as a tick delay goes. This is our timer. Right now it's set to uh, 100 ticks, 20 ticks is a second. And then we have this at three things of delay running into a block right here, which then powers this mechanical miner, which will then mine whatever uh, ore uh, was just created by the atomic reconstructor right there. So, yeah. Pretty simple to set up. This doesn't even have to be uh, insulated. This doesn't even have to be a redstone conduit. It's just easier to use redstone conduits than redstone. And so this can actually just be plain old redstone if we want it to be. Uh, this is very simple stuff as far as uh, the redstone goes right here. Now the question is, can we decrease this tick delay? Or uh, will that have some negative impact on it, prevent it from working correctly? So we're going to set this to 60 ticks and see what happens. Uh, wait, what? An instone ore. An instone ore? Oh, this thing is full. So we need to extract everything from here into a uh, crate. Uh, just for an example. Aha! Now that the buffer has been completely uh, reduced so that uh, this is now to accepting everything that this uh, mechanical miner mines, everything is, seems to be working very well, even at the lower tick speed. And I'm going to try and bump it up one more time to 40. Okay, 40 seems to be working fine. Let's bump it up to 20. No, 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 no. Not 20, not 20. We'll do 40. We'll do 40. 40 seems great. <laughs> 40's been working great for us. And now, this appears to be a good source of XP, too, if that's the way we're going to be if we don't have silk touch in there. Because, you know, 
obviously coal and stuff will produce XP along with it when it's mined and so since this is really close to a player it uh, produces XP so really we could actually uh, put a an XP solid experience solidifier from actually additions to um, do all that to collect all that but eventually I actually want to silk touch all this and so I don't think the investment for an XP solidifier just for this thing is uh, necessarily worth it so and always need an on off switch so here we are we have this and all we have to do to turn this off is do that oh pff, well then hold up hold up wait wait a second wait a second Pulse. When it receives a pulse, it will do it. So now, now, since this is on pulse mode instead of just a uh, redstone on mode, this should work as an off switch. Perfect! Yes! Okay, that is exactly what I wanted out of the system. Anyway, it is break time, and you can see that a lot is happening around spawn right here. Um, we have a new member of the server, Apache Tech, and he is, uh, he has his house right here, and he's underground, I believe, right now, over in that direction. Ah, yes, I see his name tag. Um, yeah, but this is his house. He's, uh, just recently come to the server, but he did a lot of cleaning up around spawn, and he used the, uh, what's it called? Um the random things light redirectors to uh, keep this obsidian from showing on the outside and you can see that Wyla or uh, the one probe actually says that this is obsidian even though it looks like alabaster like the rest of this so this is a really cool and he's done some stuff in the nether as well and so we're going to take a peek into there and show all of you what's going on and ta-da he has, oh my goodness, <laughs> done this whole thing with a whole ton of bedrock everywhere. And so it's looking really good. And yeah, so what, what he did in order to make this possible, he used the wand called the moving wand. The moving wand. Yes, he used the moving wand to move the bedrock block by block and if we were to remove some of this we could see where he got it all from but he removed it block by block and we also have an elevator shaft right here which is super cool and replaced it all right in this area right here which is super neat so anyway he's done a ton of work for the server and you should really go check out his videos he has a youtube channel and it will be in the l description below but uh, the next step in getting our ore machine put together is to gather all of the required parts and machines and stuff like that. Okay, so here we are. We have all of our stuff put together in the right thing. The delay is at 40 ticks. Um, we've slightly modified the redstone and the positioning of our auto placer, but that's okay. Um, everything still works just fine. I sh it should still work just fine, that is. Um, yes okay it is working just fine now oh wow that is sapping power oh wow okay now I forgot to add the off switch so what we're gonna have to do for the moment is mine around back right here put the off switch right there there we go okay awesome now <laughs> the reason that wasn't working was because we have cobblestone right there not because um, none of the other stuff not because the laser wasn't working actually hold up a second that wasn't going to work anyway because we didn't have our lens on there silly me okay our lens is now on there <laughs> Okay. Okay. So we're ready for our first test. Um, we do not have a storage thing out the back. We will work on that, just not yet. Um, so we are ready to start, and so we're going to turn this lever on. 
Coal? How much power does this thing take? A thousand RF per tick? That's not bad. I don't mind a thousand RF per tick. It's too fast. The auto breaker is activating too quickly. Oh, and now it's completely out of power. Nope, nope, nope. Off. Abort, abort, abort. Okay. So, glad we did this test. Um, the repeaters were set too, uh, too fast. And so, occasionally, the block, the mechanical miner right here, would uh, break the thing without it, uh, without the laser actually converting it first, and so the laser would just be a wasted shot. This thing, oh my goodness. Oh, I know why it was taking a thousand RF per tick. Because that's the maximum output from this thing right here. Okay, so it's actually more than a thousand RF per tick, which is quite a bit considering we only have water wheels for our power source right now. <laughs> so we definitely need to think about getting some better power and other stuff like that. Um, but for the moment, this thing is working, and I am super happy about it, because now we have pretty much all the ores we could ever need uh, right here, just from this one machine. Super awesome. Very excited about this. Now we need to work on where we're going to put all of the stuff that comes out of the miner right here. So I decided that uh, instead of using minecarts, we are going to use conveyor belts. So we have a bunch of rotten flesh right here that we are going to dump on the ground, turn on our laser right there, and turn it all to leather. Okay, so we have uh, conveyor belts here. Um, and I'm wondering if we can... I thought we could make these go up a slope, but apparently not. Aha, there we go. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to make sure that there's something up there first, and then place it down. So, uh, we are going to start from the top, have everything run into this chest right there, and then work our way back down making sure that each lever, uh, layer has a conveyor belt. And there we go. Oh my goodness, we can ride on this. That's so cool. <laughs> oh boy. And then hopefully that should automatically put stuff into the chest. If not, um, actually, yeah, we can test that out right now. Throw something down, and it does automatically put it into the chest, so that actually works very, very well. Aha! There we go! Yes! You can see all this stuff bouncing up along there, and so what we've done here is we actually don't need this connection right here, and so what can we can do is disable it, but um, we have... Uh, the mechanical miner outputting to a chest, which is then has a hopper right here that is outputting onto the conveyor belt. And so from there, it comes all the way up into the chest up here. So yeah, everything's working very nicely. And uh, this system is pretty close to done. Okay, so now while this thing is not in its final state, uh, we can still turn it on for a little bit. So we're going to come back here, turn this lever off so that things will start working, and we should see the ores start to head up there, and that is super duper cool. Lots of stuff coming up, that's super neat. Oh, hold up. We can't keep up with the power uh, needs of this thing. Uh, this thing can't transfer out power fast enough to keep up with this thing right here. And so the problem is, is that its laser thing isn't uh, converting it to an ore every time. And so that is, again, causing issues. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
And that's kind of funky. Okay, so I made a better capacitor bank, and that gives me 5k RF per tick instead of 1k, and so uh, let's see how th this one does. It looks like it's keeping up. Yeah, it's totally keeping up now. Um, okay, it uses about 2k RF per tick. Plus or minus, depending on what ores it's uh, producing. And it can't go for very long off of... Uh, 2k it can go for a decent amount of time. My goodness, okay, so it's working well. Um, I reformatted this so that it would work better and wouldn't, like, jump up all over the place all the time. Um, and so hopefully this should work much nicer. Um, and at some point we want to get a silk touch book for this so that we can process the other ores uh, in, a, in the most beneficial way for us. Because each one of these ores is costing us a fair amount of RF... And so, yeah, so we want to make sure that we are getting the most uh, for all of our stuff as far as that goes, because um, we don't have necessarily the best power generation in the world, um, which is fine. I'm great with that. Uh, the problem with that is that uh, things with, like, ore, pro ore generation and processing and stuff like that, we have to make sure that we're uh, getting the most out of it, which is great, uh, honestly. Uh, that's awesome, in my opinion. So we just need to... Um, anyway, uh, now that we have that set up, that is pretty much uh, all I had planned for this episode. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um... I'm going to go put this capacitor bank up with the rest of our stuff. Currently, we are helping out Avnior with his power situation because he has um, had some issues with stuff taking power when it probably doesn't need to take power. And so, yeah. But, um, anyway, it's uh, things, are, things are going fine, but... Um, we can actually, I think we can actually even put this in there, and it will uh, take directly out of the thing right there. It's only going at 5,000. Oh, I know why it's still going at 5,000, because 5,000 is the max input-output of this capacitor bank. So, yeah, that's why that's going at 5,000 instead of 15k. So, but anyway, I um, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.